Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you are. Just want to let everybody know we're going to give a bit of a pause here, maybe wait a minute and let everybody um, have a chance to make sure they can join and then we'll get started. All right, excellent. <clears throat> I think we have uh, um, enough folks that have been able to join here, so time to get going. Thank you very much for, for joining us on our webinar today, and uh, we're going to dive into API security. Our title today, API Security Decoded Insights into Emerging Trends and Effective AppSec Strategies. And really, we've done a separate, um, more technical API security uh, webinar and we did have some questions about you know what about the basics and best practices and trends around around this the segment in uh, in security and apps application security specifically so um, we're going to cover those types of conversations in our session today so again welcome everyone my name is patrick vandenberg i'm the director of product marketing here at invicti I've been in cybersecurity about two decades and with a number of years in the application security space. So really excited to um, be here with you and take you through our conversation today. All right, agenda first, of course, right? So we've broken down today's session into four main topics. We wanna to touch on some API trends and then follow up with uh, what, why, and how around API. So more, more or less around the basics. API security challenges, we're gonna dive into that, challenges and risks, and then of course, wrap up with best practices. Now, one thing that we like to touch on here because uh, we do get some questions around who's in Victi, what's going on with these wild colors we haven't seen, potentially haven't seen before. So we wanna make sure everybody's up to date. Um, as most of our customer base or market may know us as either Acunetics or NetSparker, we are now Invicti. And the, the portfolios and people around Acunetics and, and NetSparker have been combined recently and we've done a rebrand under the Invicti name. So everything that, that you've loved in the past um, from Acunetics or NetSparker, is now in Victi, same solutions, and we do have some exciting news to come later this year around, around what we're bringing to the table, but absolutely, our core business is around dynamic application security testing with some very seasoned engines, and we do have capabilities around IAST, software composition analysis, and as many uh, of you may or may not know, we are integrated all the way from CI/CD pipeline through QA, pre-production and production um, scanning. So we do provide the full scope of software development lifecycle testing around application security. With that, let's dive into our first section, API trends. So web application programming interfaces or APIs, they are huge and, and still Underprotected attack surface for for cyber criminals. While application security testing that's been traditionally focused on user interface, as we all know, the modern applications they rely heavily on APIs for that source of data exchange and and to build the application architecture. So today's enterprise apps they're no longer these big monolithic applications. They're, they're more like um, a collection or a constellation of, of combined services that are communicating through these APIs. And those are all being pushed 
in rapid development um, that is just being driven from accelerating business requirements. We know this. So the pace or velocity of software development continues to accelerate. So teams are, or developers are naturally tapping into the opportunity APIs present. The ability to quickly build and expand on these applications using APIs, it's crucial for innovation and support that business growth. But what it also does is dramatically increase the web application, web attack surface. And that of course can leave organizations exposed to attacks. And here's some stats to show the adoption around APIs. And, and these are some pretty, um, pretty impressive statistics actually. So first one here on the left, 1.3 billion in API requests uh, noted in 2022, and that's over a 50% increase from the prior year. Almost 90% of the developers report using APIs as part of the projects. <clears throat> Interestingly, the average number of APIs used by an enterprise across organization, 15 and a half thousand. And this, this last stat here, only 4%. I, I personally think it's a little suspect um, that, that some organizations say they have no APIs at all. I would not be surprised at all if that number is even lower because there's unknown use of APIs somewhere in the organization um, or third-party apps that are in use. We know the, the shadow or, or hidden activity that happens in the IT world that does present a challenge for, for security. So I even I even wonder if it's if 4% is too high. So needless to say, across all of these statistics, API adoption is, is significant and it continues to increase. So more and more, uh, a GUI is just a way to retrieve data from APIs and present it to the users. It's, it's a window. And a lot of the, the logic of the application is now, now built on or driven through APIs. So in modern service-oriented architectures, most or, or if not all of that, that application functionality web services and exposed through APIs. And really in effect, the APIs are, are now the gatekeepers of the world's business logic and data. And considering data is the most valuable resource, it's no wonder that API-based attacks are now on the rise. While most companies are aware of the need to scan APIs, there's some real practical challenges to be overcome on the way to making API security a real routine part of web application security. Being under pressure to add API testing to a growing backlog, you know, that causes AppSec professionals to often need help finding, um, you know, the right workflows and tools that they need to work with to make this initiative around API security successful. So let's let's look into what we're talking about here. If you want to avoid becoming the, the next breach headline, and yeah, that's a bit of a shock statement, but it's just, it's a reality. When the attack surface exposure is as great as it is for something like API security with the adoption that we're seeing right now, it's just a reality we have to, we have to uh, acknowledge. <clears throat> There's no question you need to test and secure web applications in their entirety. So that includes both the UI and the API. Um, because we know cyber criminals are adept at finding the weakest spot, and that's where they will try to exploit. But while web app security testing is already fairly mature, API security specifically is still catching up. And so there's many misconceptions and misunderstandings to clear all this up around testing the API part of the web attack surface. So let's dive into that in a little more detail. So moving on to what, why, and how of APIs. All right, I know we're diving into real basics here, so this may be a bit of an eye roll for some of the experts um, that are joining us here today. Bear with us a few slides. Just want to make sure everybody's on the same page in case this is, this is new or a little bit unfamiliar territory for some of you. But let's start with the question, what are these APIs? And some basic definitions. So an application programming interface to start this acronym, that's a connection 
to expose or connect to software functionality to other systems or applications or data sources, data repositories, as an example. Now, a web API, that's an interface for accessing web-based software specifically. There's a lot of different models or standards for defining and calling these. Um, many of you are probably familiar with hearing uh, the term REST APIs uh, as one of them, and we'll touch on the different, different sources that Invicti um, supports later on as well. Another key point here is the API endpoint. That's important to know. So this is the URL for actually calling or talking to a specific web API. The, the endpoint, that's the address to which an API requests and parameters are, are being sent. So, um, you know, just, just an interesting anecdote here. Uh, the first production example of, of a web app, uh, a programming interface, that was understanding Salesforce back in, in 2000. Okay, moving forward. So why are APIs, um, you know, an attractive target for, for cyber attacks? There's, there's certainly a number of reasons, but main four here to, to walk through. First, API creators, they're expecting well-formed requests from known systems. So they're less likely to check incoming calls. You know, if a call knows the format to connect then there's basically an assumption that you know it, it's legitimately making that request because it understands the format correctly. And, and so there's an assumption that that's being taken care of in the same way as it was for user-facing pages. Now, second, many APIs start as private APIs and that might have only been built for uh, testing or internal use. A lot of times these can spill into production without being um, you know, revoked or, or shut down um, and certainly not inventoried or documented, logged um, and, and noted for, for access control. So we have these leakage points uh, to be able to connect with the systems or the backend systems that spill into the production environments. Third, APIs are designed with automated access in mind. And that's convenient for for valid users, of course, but that also provides a very simple connection point for attackers if they know formats and, and where to connect to uh, for, for these specific APIs. And then our last point here, API endpoints, they're easy to define, but they're hard to find. So if they haven't been defined and documented, we can have we can have a, a basically um hidden a collection of hidden access points to the back end systems that get put into production environments so all of this make apis a fast growing vector for cyber attacks and of course lots of consequences uh, from data breaches to denial of service to ransomware that can can play out as a result let's start by understanding the differences between a couple of views here. We have attacks on APIs and we have attacks via APIs. To simplify this, attacks on APIs, that's about getting access to the interface itself. But attacks via APIs, that's about using the API access link to attack the underlying application. And it's important to know those terms when we're looking at, at the testing and the vulnerabilities that we have in the system. If we want to see how APIs work now, you know, they really are the glue behind modern, um, the entire modern web, uh, modern app architectures. So first off, web facing applications, they absolutely can have external API that allows other software to interact, integrate with the application. Pretty common. Um, almost necessary today, as we know. For Invicti, you know, as an example, our own API makes it possible for customers to and partners to integrate vulnerability testing into existing workflows and the software development life, life cycles of our customers, or to provide customizations. I mean, this is this is an expected interaction with with software today. 
and it makes software on the whole a lot more powerful. You also have APIs in service-based applications. In this case, you know, the API calls are used for communication, data exchange between application components. And then another typical use for web APIs, that's to provide a standalone or multi-purpose backend. You can, you can then have a single backend that serves data to many different front-end calls, um, or sorry, front-ends via API calls. And this is how mobile applications work, where the application is just a inter interface that calls back to, to a central backend through, through these APIs. All right, so hopefully now we've covered uh, the basics around you know, adoption trends in, in API and the purposes for use and what they're all about. Um, and hopefully that was a valuable level set for, for a good portion of you. But now let's spend a bit of time on the, the risks and challenges around API and API security. You know, we wanna look, look at how we go about securing these. There's some challenges that we wanna work through in order to do that. You know, the original use case for, for adding APIs was to extend access to app functionality beyond just the, the GUI. And, you know, notably, this really supports integrations. It supports the need for automation. <laughs> As we've, you know, collectively moved towards service-oriented architectures and agile development, APIs and all the services behind them, they're now fundamental building blocks of modern web apps. So in terms of security, the web application has gone from potentially one big target to hundreds of little targets. And that means all of these hundreds of potential entry points need to be defended. That means a complexity in the attack surface coverage that we need. Now, there are organizations that assume they don't need or you won't need dedicated API security because you have a WAF or API gateway. And I think, you know, if we look at web application security historically, um, there's a time in conversation where WAFs were gonna cover that. So actually engaging on the development side of the house around these applications to address security and attack surface wasn't necessary. We all know how that's played out. We need both. In, in complex environments today. And the same thing is true with API security. You do want those protection mechanisms such as an API gateway to protect as much as possible, but you also need the proactive approach to identify vulnerabilities and strip them out of, of the applications themselves um, in the process of getting them to production. Same dynamics we've seen historically is true for API security going forward. Let's continue with some misunderstandings around API security. And you know, API security really is an under, underestimated risk factor here. And what we're trying to do here is note the distinction between legacy applications and modern web applications. And um, you know, having a distributed architecture gives malicious actors much more freedom to, to invoke their attacks on a much greater scale with a lot less risk of, of detection. So naturally they're gonna take that course. But even with monolithic legacy apps, they will often have an external API for integration or data exchange, right? So even though if it's a large even or large or monolithic app or, or legacy app, they're still leveraging APIs today. It's a powerful construct, powerful tool. So, so it's, it's gonna be uh, taken advantage of for sure. And with modern web applications, they can have both external facing a APIs and, and themselves be made up of dozens of microservices, each with their own API. All of this contributes to an overall attack surface that needs to be tested. We need to be aware of this. We need to have a the, the programmatics in place in our, in our broader application security program to address these potential vulnerability points. So, okay, we have these vulnerabilities. We wanna be clear about this, right? Why would cyber criminals waste time trying to hack a login when there's potentially an easier, easier route here? 
when they can quietly extract the same data through an API. So this is why we're seeing the risk increase type of attack or, or approach of the attack increase and a shift to, to targeting the APIs. So a few more stats here, if you aren't quite a believer yet, um, th in this uh, case, we'll look at some stats that uh, have a risk lens on them. And I think that, you know, the, the first, first stat really says it. 95% of all companies have had an API security incident in the last year. And API attack traffic has jumped by almost 700%. Very, very significant there alone. Um, 83% of all web traffic is now API call traffic. So if malicious entities understand the vulnerability um, vulnerabilities that are introduced through APIs, then you know this is a pretty exciting opportunity for them, for them seeing how much traffic is is API based. And then you know of course in the past decade, forty four percent increase in cybersecurity incidents, and we know that that has been greatly impacted in the past few years due to attacks on on APIs. So why APIs are a security risk? Beyond just the tech, some of the technical details we talked about, let's break this down to or through the lenses of people, process, and, and technology, because all aspects contribute to it. So first, looking at the people side of this equation, one thing we learned from our Invicti surveys, specifically our fall survey, is that up to 70% of development teams will skip some security steps when, when they're under pressure, under the gun. We know development focuses on functionality first and security second, and that's even harder with the velocity of software today. And of course, this includes API testing. Developers often perceive APIs as internal assets as well, uh, because there is some truth to that. And, and a lot of assumptions are made that they're less of a security risk as a result uh, compared to user-facing interfaces. So there's one component. As we move to process, unless it's deeply embedded into development and testing workflows, API security can slip uh, out of mind when time is short and release deadlines loom. And, and you know, this is an artifact of the velocity again of, of software development today. APIs may simply be harder and more time consuming to find. And then of course, document and test. But if they aren't, if the necessary rigor isn't in place around the documentation of the, these APIs, finding them later becomes ex extremely difficult under, under time constraints. And the last area is around the technology or tech, uh, technologies and tooling. You know, if a separate tool chain is needed for API part of security testing, this increases the risk of vulnerabilities. Um, it's actually a little more process and tooling required for, for development to adopt. That can result in, in vulnerability slipping into production um, through missing or incomplete testing. APIs can change and expand much faster <clears throat> than user-facing interfaces. This can make purely manual testing impractical. Uh, it also strengthens the case for relying on efficient or accurate scanning solutions, right? So um, if it's harder manual, there's going to be more reliance on automated capabilities uh, to be able to help out with API security testing. And then finally, while APIs are using the same web technologies as, as websites and web apps, most general purpose vulnerabilities scanners or DAS tools will be unable to recognize and test all of these endpoints. They might be able to apply some security tests, but how comprehensive are those tests? And what is their capacity to be able to identify or ingest the, the endpoints um, uh, detail to be able to send the tests? And, and this does uh, potentially leave security gaps. So all of this plays into you know, the increasing risk of, of APIs. But, you know, one thing's pretty clear. 
I think we can all accept this today. Hopefully everybody does. And, and we don't have organizations uh, carrying this blind spot. But if you have web applications, you already have APIs in use somewhere. Um, and your tax surface is expanding as a result of it. So now we get to our, our wrap up section and best practices, right? What is going to help? adopt API security, close off or address this, this expanding or complicating application attack surface. You know, everyday enterprise apps, they're being rapidly assembled from a lot of different microservices and they're all communicating through APIs. And to make sure that these modern apps, that they're, they're fully covered with security testing, the, the next step for them would be just to extend vulnerability scanning to include APIs. Simple statement, of course, but you know it has to be done. In order to understand your true security posture, you're going to need to cover that entire attack surface. So we've got to make sure that our plan and our programs include both UIs and APIs. And we need to make sure that both areas are covered across the software lifecycle. So right from development, CI, CD, uh, pipeline integration, as an example, through various stages and environments right into production. Seems obvious, but quick level set. So as we look at the collection of capabilities that help. Here's a breakdown that Invicti can bring to the table. So I want to do a quick run through of each one of these categories um, because it, it, for many, it, it hasn't been evident that, that we've learned. We've got a subset of customers that are actively leveraging our API security capabilities and a whole host of, of customers and, and new organizations that aren't aware of the extent of our capabilities in API security. So first one, got to be able to cover or have that coverage addressed in this case for APIs. So you have to be able to see major API types and definitions. And adopting a unified approach to API vulnerability testing, that starts with knowing what API types are used in your web app environments, listing the endpoints that need to be tested, the API endpoints, I mean and having the technical means to be able to test them. So API has, has three major web API types, REST, SOPA, and GraphQL. They're all covered out of the box with built-in dedicated security checks that are sent or applied and support various ways of importing and discovering API definitions. So critical first, first uh, point there. Next. The ability to import definitions and schemas. The sheer number of different API definition formats used to be a major obstacle for centralizing API security testing. And, and this often meant requiring several or multiple tools and complicating the process overall as a result. Invicti comes with built-in support for 15 different formats, including Postman, OpenAPI, Waddle, WSDL, and many more. So nice coverage as well on the, the ability to import definitions and schemas. All right, so we've got the coverage. We found, uh, we, we understand the, the formats, but you need to be able to also discover additional API endpoints. And what do we do there? Having definitions, that's crucial because you can't crawl an API as you would a web app, of course, we all know. So you simply have to know the endpoints in the request formats. In, in practice, there's gonna be times when you're dealing with undocumented APIs that you still need to be able to test to get that coverage that we're talking about that, that we want to achieve. To help with this, Invicti automatically imports any supported API definition files that it finds during crawling. But that is only a, a part of the discovery capabilities. When crawling your websites and applications, Invicti will examine the structure of the URLs it encounters. And if it finds a URL that looks like an API call, it will attempt to infer the API endpoint and test it. So this includes heuristic URL rewriting, 
uh, to discover an underlying request parameter and then probe for weaknesses just like an attacker would. So we've got some discovery capability and expansion on the coverage there that's built into Invicti. All right, our fourth point here, authenticating uh, automatically. Automated authentication, that's, that's just a practical prerequisite for um, vulnerability scanning in general, and of course, for API vulnerability scanning. So the scanner's got to obtain API access before it can test the underlying application. And Invicti provides uh, necessary support here for the popular API auth methods. And that includes you know, basic HTTP authentication, uh, JWTs, JSON web tokens, and auth support as well. And with the auth support, you're going to get the ability to scan in single sign-on environments. And that can be that can be problematic. I mean to say, of course, open auth support. And if if the scanner is not advanced enough, not having that that's that SSO ability is is very problematic. And Victi does take care of that as well. All right. Second last one here, testing for vulnerabilities with consistency around, around accuracy. And we know that's critical for, for core application security testing. With authentication now set up and the test targets discovered and identified, Invicti can use the entire suite of high quality security checks that are constantly evolving to safely probe the full application attack surface uh, for vulnerabilities. And that covers, in a single scan, UIs and APIs. We have a capability um, that you may or may not have heard, proof-based scanning technology. And what happens here is it automatically validates or confirms the exploitability of the vast majority. I think our latest benchmark is 94%. So automated validation of the exploitability of a potential vulnerability at 94%. And that reduces the noise, that reduces the risk of false positives. Being able to trust vulnerability scan reports, that, that's critical. So you can act on them without fear or false alarms, erode confidence, um, and, and disrupt uh, deadlines with, with high degrees of, of noise or false positives in the system. And, and I think we've all heard or experienced this over time. So the final one here we wanna cover streamline application security with one central platform. By treating web APIs as an integral part of the overall attack surface and scanning them for vulnerabilities using this same centralized platform, the Invicti approach can simplify that application security program instead of adding yet more moving parts and more tooling to the process. So we're able to address the UI and the API components in a single scan sequence in a single program for you. And, and that's been clearly stated and appreciated by, by uh, a large number of our customers as well. So getting close to the end, hopefully we're, we're, we're providing lots of value for you here. Made some references to DAST. And so what's so special about, about DAST? You know, a key prerequisite for addressing all of these challenges and smoothly including API security into a wider web app security program, it's having the technical ability to make it work together. With, with API endpoints adding even more pieces to the complexity of, of web development, starting from the outside and working your way in is that's the surest way to maximize your test coverage and understanding the, the nature of vulnerabilities and their exploitability. And what that really means or points to is dynamic application security testing or DAST. So building on mature, proven technologies that are widely deployed and getting constant feedback and iteration still 
you know, the evictee vulnerability scanner offers pragmatic DAS first approach to web app security in general, but also inherently web API security testing in particular. So it's it's a it's a very natural or organic blend of capabilities and and test coverage. All right. On to our summary and our wrap up. If you've got web applications, we know you've got APIs, we've covered that, you've got to secure both. And using the right modern tools, API security scanning can easily, yes, easily, I know we talk about challenges and complexities, but if you have the right tool, it does become easy to add it or embed it into your routine and become an automated part of your web application security program. So integrating API scanning into your existing SDLC, your software development process and your agile process, so you can scan and continuously secure the entire web attack surface. You know, that's what that's what customers are looking for. Without the addition of, of tooling and costs with minimum setup um, and minimum minimal impact to the existing process. That is a nice benefit and expansion of capabilities. So that's really, that's re the, the best direction and, and a, a strong wrap up to how to address the, the growing scope of APIs in use in our software and how to make sure that is, that is a, an addressed part of your application attack service from a testing perspective. So with that, thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us. Hopefully this was a valuable um, half hour or so that we were together and will help you on your way to API security testing practices.